Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. To start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did for his. For this particular footage, I'm going to introduce three new things, like one hero and two creatures of manifestations. So I hope you guys could bear with me, and I'll try all that I can to make this work. And sorry for the adjustment, I'm just trying to work things out. Here's the first thing I'm going to introduce, and I hope you guys could bear with me. Warp Boy. Real name, Billy Nigels. Height, 5 feet 7 inches. Weight, 145 pounds. Status Hero and Son of Warp Girl and Warp Goat. Base, 2 Earths Mobile. Intelligence, 3 Brains. Behavior, Charming and Willful. He enjoys helping his family. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, his love for his family. Powers, he can make others think that he is warping himself and other objects, has sharp hooves and horns, and possesses great speed. Eyes, deep blue, hair, whitish silver, and sleek. Origin, after a while in their marriage, Warp Girl and Warp Goat had finally just dated a son whom Warp Girl decided to name Billy. After he was changed into an adult by the age-altering youth, Billy traveled with his parents and helped them with different objectives. Eventually, he got into a fight against Chimera and almost got killed until he was rescued by Goat Girl, who stomped on Chimera and threw her into the distance. Earning the name Warp Boy, Billy would have as many dates with Goat Girl as possible, always thanking her for saving him. Costume. He's simply covered in whitish silver fur. Teams. Solitary or with other heroes. Original inspiration. Optical disturbances and goats. The next thing I'm going to introduce is an interesting one, and I hope you guys could bear with me and such. X-Crocs. Real name, inapplicable. Height and weight, varied. Status, villain, in creations of Doctor Scream and Voodoo. Base, mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior. Savage and relentless. They enjoy both mayhem and all organic brains. Lethality. As above. They are really hard to kill. Weaknesses. Salt, fire, and cranial damage. Powers. They have zombie and crocodile-based powers, along with having a strong healing factor and mostly traveling in swarms. Eyes, deep black and varied members. Hair, none. Origin. One time, Voodoo and Dr. Scream decided to share at least a few undead organisms for their intended missions. Soon, they created a series of all kinds of zombie crocodiles, which they decided to name the X-Crocs. After the two villains commanded the X-Crocs to attack Miami, the heroic team known as the Arcade V2 arrived and were able to defeat most of the undead hordes, with the rest of the Crocs fleeing from the scene. Upset of this, Voodoo and Dr. Scream still kept their promise to share some of their zombie creatures. Costume? None. Teams? Solitary? For their masters and other creatures. Original inspiration, zombies and crocodiles. The last one I'm going to introduce is a very unique one, which it has an illustration in my blog, so if you want to see a visual of this creature, you can just go to my blog if you have any access to it. It's one of those available things, you know? I mean, here it is. Just bear with me, please. Yeast. Real name? Inapplicable. Height and weight, varied. Status, anti-hero and cosmic organism. Base, mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior. Willful, craving, and destructive. He'll do anything to devour everything. Lethality. Only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses. 
low stability, extreme temperatures, and is easily commanded. Powers. It's a pile of cosmic slime with a strong healing factor, duplication, can devour any form of matter, and has a mind of its own. Eyes, none. Air, none. Origin. One time, a basketball-sized space rock crash-landed two miles from the New York City of the default Earth from a since-unknown source. When a young man came by to examine it, he broke the rock, and a small pile of tannish slime emerged and jumped onto his face, making him its first victim. Over time, the pile of slime became more massive and horrendous, as it was consuming everything in its path. Eventually, the heroic Denstroneal arrived and found that it was easily commanded by others. After taking it back to the Paranormal Defense Headquarters, Denstroni placed it in a secluded containment room and decided to call the pile Yeast, after its dull color. Costume? None. Teams? Solitary? For Denstroni and others. Original inspiration? The Blob. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed those three things, and I hope you guys are having a fine rest of the month, and hope everyone has a fine um, Valentine's Day and such. And uh, if you don't mind, I would like to see something from you guys. Anyone watching this, and anyone who's been willing to be with me for this entire endeavor as of so far. You don't have to. But can you at least name as many of the characters and creatures that I have previously introduced? Because part of my Leviathan universe being immortalized is social recognition. And I want to make sure that they are identified in a social aspect. So you don't have to, but if you guys personally want, you could try to name as many of the things that I introduced in my videos and in my blog and such as you can. You don't have to. It's all on you, I swear. And thank you for everyone who's willing to tag along with me during this time. Because I'm somewhere in the 80s. And eventually, at some point at least, I hope it's not too early for me to say this, but eventually I'll be going anywhere close to my 100th episode. I hope it's not too early for me to make the statement. I just hope things would work out. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. You don't have to. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a fine Valentine's Day and such. And uh, until next time, in transmission.